Welcome everyone and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be looking into Alibaba and today we're going to be revisiting the case of Alibaba because of course it has been right now when you see this around a couple of days after Charlie Munga has come out with his 13F filing that actually showed that he cut his stake in half for the Jelly Journal Corporation and of course this was kind of a shock for investors. Now we haven't seen a big sell-off as we can see it has been a couple of days I think it is down like let's say 3%, something like that. Really not all that much. It might actually even be less than that. So we haven't seen a big sell-off. But once again, we are trading at enormous, uh, you know, enormously cheap valuations at this point. Look at this. Even if we take the year uh, view, so the one in the past year, basically, the stock is down almost 60%. Past five years, even down 11%. And look at this huge peak, right? That is basically where Alibaba was trading at 300. It has been down 70%. Uh, ever since so that is truly truly remarkable and that definitely has something to do with the fact that you know we haven't seen a big sell-off but nonetheless some people are still worried right what does this entail what what happens when one of the best investors out there respected by many uh, including me and probably all of you watching this video what do we do if someone like him cuts his stake in half now i always say nothing at all because you must know your research first if you right now feel nervous at all all right, perhaps for two minutes it's okay, but after that, it's probably a sign that you haven't researched your company enough. When I personally looked at the filings that he cut his stake in half, I thought, oh, that's weird. And then 30 seconds later, I already forgot it and I didn't mind anymore. And, you know, I was moving on with my day because I like the business and I know the business and I did research into the business. So what I'm trying to say is make sure, you know, to use this as an opportunity. Do you feel a little bit stressed? Do you feel a little bit worried? Did you doubt yourself? Did I make the right choice? then you need to do more research into the business. So today we're just going to go through a couple of nice things uh, about the business, about the stock, just to recapture where we precisely are even after the cut of Charlie Munger. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the title is Alibaba Group Unjustifiably Cheap. And actually, uh, I, I agree with this. You know, I'm once again, I'm writing an, a little essay for you guys about Alibaba. Uh, and actually, you know, I, I'm... Every time I'm just thinking and I think, you know, what on earth, what, what on earth is going on, basically, right? The business has so much potential, so different, so many different segments. The price that you pay is enormously cheap. Yeah, once again, it, it all boils down to political risk, right? What do people think about politics? Uh, now, I am not that afraid. Like, I, I actually think, once again, the regulation that China has imposed, for example, uh, is actually very good for businesses long term. I also do believe that China will always be on the side of its businesses. And so I feel perfectly comfortable having my money invested there. Uh, but of course, that is what people to some extent agree on. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, we should always bear in mind you are buying a business. And what really matters is the quality of the business and at the same time, the price you pay for the business. These are the only factors that really go into return in the long term all right so these are the two factors that we really decide if something turns out to be a great investment or not all right so that is important to bear in mind i think now the summary i'll just skip for now but please if you if you don't know these things just you know take a little look take it as a little recapture of the stock uh, but for now i will just skip this so first of all the 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 alibaba case now let's first once more go over this valuation it is currently at sale for seven times pre-tax earnings right when adjusted for its cash positions of course this is truly truly cheap right and and people always think is this a great way to value business it is in the case of alibaba why because they are a cash flow machine they get so much free cash flow at the same time they are profitable right they make a ton of profit and so alibaba does not necessarily need its cash pile we already have seen that in the past right they can basically not use it right now they have some opportunities right some acquisitions here and there they are doing some buybacks and such i think management has been making great decisions so far they have increased the buybacks two times Times, all right the capacity at least and at the same time you see that they really have invested i think 20 or 25 billion in 2021 when chinese equities were crashing so i think that is just great i think that is a great strategy to go about it so right now they actually have some use of the cash power but still even after all these investments the cash power still grew with 5 billion or something so 
we should bear in mind that this case is very, very important because Alibaba can at every ever every point basically decide we are going to pay it out. They could literally do a special dividend right now of around $25 a share. That is how much cash per share you get. So one fourth of the price they could just completely pay out right now. They could literally do a $25 dividend and then their cash pile is gone. All right. And at the same time, we have a business that is trading at around $75 a share. And then we are talking about seven times pre-tax earnings. Now, then this also is a phenomenal point. So the downside is further protected by Beijing's vows to stabilize the market and its $25 a billion, dollar, of course, repurchase program. So definitely true, right? The, vi the vice president of China or Beijing, as we could, we could call it, right, has come out and said, we are going to support businesses. We're going to support markets. We're going to make sure they thrive. Now, of course, the most important thing is to see, do they put their money where their mouth is? Now, of course, my expression has always been, yes, they will. And of course, they have so far, right? So basically, they have said, please do more buybacks, right? Please do more buybacks. Alibaba came out with more buybacks. Then what they also did is they said, okay, right now, Tencent, NetEase, the big businesses, you are allowed to publish games again, right? We have restricted this for so long, Right now, you are able to continue again, right? So what we see is that this pressure is definitely, you know, calming down a little bit. Uh, basically, the normal life is continuing in China again. And so we should also bear in mind that the policies of, of Beijing and China always have been to stabilize stabilize markets, okay? that's al That always has been the main objective. So what they did is when the big housing boom came basically uh four four or five years ago something like that what they did is they actually restricted people from buying houses so the demand would go down and so this growth in the housing prices and such was going uh you know slower than than what we what we see in big capitalistic systems with big booms big big busts and, and such right so they tried to stabilize the market now of course, we could argue, you know, is that really happening right now? Because, of course, you know, there is this uh, a lot of debt in China and such. So we will, of course, see how this economically will play out. Of course, we should better in mind. Still, the policy of Beijing is always to stabilize markets. And so I think right now what they have seen is, OK, this, this stock market is not going the right way. Right. Let's turn this around and let's support the businesses again. Uh, and actually, that is exactly what they have been doing so far. Now, once again, let's just talk a little bit about Warren Buffett. Well, Warren Buffett always talks about the 10x pre-tax rule. So this is really when businesses get cheap, okay? So you pay the grand master, you know, he gets called in the article. And um, absolutely, you know, absolutely agree with that. Of course, we should always listen to a Buffett. Uh, for those of you that haven't read his essays yet, please read his essays, read his letters. A phenomenal, phenomenal read, of course, for every investor. Now, what we see is the 10 time pre-tax earnings really make make deals cheap. That is basically what it is, right? So what we can see is Coca-Cola, American Express, Wells Fargo, Walmart, uh, all 10 times X, right? So 10 X pre-tax earnings. Now, once again, this is not something that you find very, very often. But when you find it, it usually means it is quite a good deal. Uh, and so, look, this is what he said about it, right? Buying an average business that stagnates forever, a 10x pre-tax would already provide a 10% pre-tax earnings yield, that are directly comparable to a 10% yield bond. Now, bear in mind, Alibaba is by no way, by no means a stagnant business. This business is going to grow rapidly. But that already shows how cheap it is. And, and also bear in mind, we don't pay 10 times pre-tax earnings. No, we pay seven, six times pre-tax earnings. And so that is already a great, great difference. This should really lead to double digit returns. That is basically what you should think about. Also, the free cash flow yield is really, really high. So I think that is also very important right now, uh, far above 10%, right? Double digits free cash flow yield, double digits or let's say double digits earnings yield after the after the cash reduction and pre-tax of course that really shows you know these investments are basically set up for great returns now if you buy a verizon or a walgreens boots or something like that with these same numbers it might not be as impressive because the the growth is simply not there but right now you get endless ideal picture after double digits 
and at the same time you get the growth and that is really what makes it very very cheap as we can see this is the price history and how things have been going so far so actually it, it dropped through it quite quickly right we are already quite long below this big point uh, but it's still very important to bear in mind that that alibaba truly truly is uh, unjustifiably cheap as the article says now, last but not least, uh, of course, I don't want to go into all the details in terms of growth and such because I've made many, many videos on this channel about that. So please, if you're interested in very specific things such as the growth, such as growth in Southeast Asia and such, please check out the other content on this channel. Uh, but one thing we should bear in mind is that all segments of Alibaba are basically growing, right? We have the cloud, we have the international e-commerce. These are the big gems in terms of growth but also e-commerce in general is still growing significantly as we can see in 2020 30 uh, tw uh 30 uh, sorry 23 okay 2023 we actually see that the asia Pac uh, pacific region is actually bigger in terms of north america europe and south america combined so that is really 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 big okay that already shows how big it is um and i think there is much more room for growth still I really do believe that there is much more room for growth. Why? First of all, we see the people, right? The people that live here, it's, it's truly remarkable. That is already very important. But also Asia is just going to be way more interesting in terms of economics. And I think that is important to bear in mind. And that will definitely drive e-commerce growth to far in the future. So once again, even after this whole Charlie Munger thing, I am definitely buying, right? I have no fear in buying the business. I love buying the business, so I will be buying the business it is that simple uh, but for those of you that are getting a little afraid once again more research into the business is required now that was all for now thank you so much for watching please in the comments let me know what you think about all of this and then i'll see you in the next one